So guys, welcome to another video, what I'm going to teach you today is how to make a boost converter, the boost converter is what takes a low screen and you raise the voltage. The principle of how the boost converter works for you to better understand how it works so we can do it in practice, right? So I'm going to make the description of the video feel the personal heart for a person, so you're going to make sure you don't make the description of the video and with the channel there a project that triggers my action, so you're going to be doing it with that my people don't have and with the channel there you can trigger projects that trigger my projects, not even the most. Post there what you feel that you're definitely using for the benefit of the channel, buy more components to make. Projects for you and whoever makes the donation can let us know in the comments of the video or send an email that will also be in the description of the videos. So guys I ask you to help me to like, share the video with your friends, family, Facebook groups and social networks. So let's go and I'll explain to you the functionality of a boost converter. So guys, here's the schematic diagram, the schematic, there are no component values because I'll show you later. I'll leave it in the schematic in Proteus, and here it's just to simplify, right? So here's the thing, here's an attempt, you'll decide this one, it can be from 3 to 12 volts, everything will depend on the output of this inductor here, if a higher inductance, this inductor will have to have an inductance, in my what I did for 70 microhenry, the more it turns in this inductor, the more the voltage here will be high at the output, less in my case I wanted more or 12 to 24 volts. I put 70 microhenry, but you will see in practice that I get even higher, it's giving 60 to 70 volts, so the smaller the number of turns in this inductor, the lower the voltage, so it will work like this, the positive will come here, it will pass through the inductor and we will leave here, if you are going to stop one here, there is the voltage drop of the diode but imagine that you put 12 because the transistor will not be working it will be off and then it goes here in its collector. It could be a transistor, or it could be a MOSFET too, when the CI start to switch it will pick up. It is not positive from the induct or will go through the collector this emitter will kind of magnetize there, so when the transistor turns off, it tends to go up in reverse, as it goes back to the inductor it tends to go to the diode, so it's going to rectify, it's going to charge this capacitor here and goes to load by V out. What will determine the voltage you want at the output will also be the adjustment you will make in the CI, through the speed that it will open and close that you will have the V out here at the output. You will open here in the adjustment of the CI, because it will increase the frequency regularly, it will open and close quickly, you will regulate the voltages you want at the output, that's how this converter works. So it's an easy circuit that I set up for you, I set it up and it worked perfectly, I really liked it, later on I'll just make some changes to the inductor, I'll make it a little bigger, or a little smaller, so we can see what we can be done. Here in the negative it is not isolated, the same as the negative of the input is the same negative of the output, it is the same negative potential, and so it is not isolated. I've already passed the layout here as you can see, and I've already passed the top silk there to the sheet, I'm going to pass it to the board now, and I'm going to drill and start soldering the components. So guys, here are the components that I'm using to make the boost converter, so here it's no big deal, some components are missing that I'm going to remove from scrap, but some I had to buy, this connector, the CI555 it's pretty generic and it's well known, right? This diode here is the Schottky diode, these are inductor coils taken from a switched source, this one if I'm not mistaken is not ferrite, it's iron powder, beauty, but it's also used to make it, there's this one here that has the ferrite core is also useful for us to do, remembering that the smaller the turns, the lower the output voltage. I will make the layout and scheme available to you as usual, I will ask you to leave a like and subscribe to my channel, I help you and you help me there in terms of subscribing and sharing the video and leaving a like on my beauty channel. Guys, as you can see, this is the schematic diagram, here are the component values, as I already explained in the video, I will let you download the schematic link, this is the schema I used, here is the value everything is fine with all the components, right? Here's the PCB, it's there too, I designed it right, it's going to be about 60 meters wide by 40 meters high, the board is very small, everything is perfect here, I didn't reinforce the tracks to withstand a little more current because how did I tell you that it was the right test and study phase? So it's very functional there, according to everything right, if you don't want to use the Schottky diode here, you just take it and do it here look, 
as if it were a letter A, it will work just fine here, the space of 2.5mm, you you are not required to use Schottky right. Here you can also replace it with transistors, you don't need to use the 3205 MOSFET, this capacitor here of 470 PF you can also put 1 NF to change the frequency a little, this resistor you can increase a little too, and testing their beauty to get a more adjustment margin, beauty guys it's very simple. Here is a 10 NF capacitor, here I put a 100 NF ceramic capacitor, this one you put according to what you are going to work on the input, remembering you see up to the maximum that the CI has voltage, right, if not you will have to use one regulator in it, so I put it here. I ended up marking 470 UF, but if I'm not mistaken I found 1000 by 16 because I want 12 to come in and 24 to come out here. Remembering guys, I'm going to do more tests with it, I'm going to modify the inductor, I'm going to modify the frequency step and see how far I can get with this converter there, then if you support me and like and want to contribute to the channel, I I can make a buck converter, what lowers the input voltage, okay. So let's go ahead with the video. So guys, how cute was our boost converter, it turned out very cute, I liked it, unfortunately the top silk didn't turn out so good, because I don't have the right paper. I put this ferrite inductor, right, it is giving more or less 70 microhenry, the photo is appearing on the screen, here I used the MOSFET 3205 for low voltage, and I used a Schottky diode here to be able to make this rectification taken from the source switched, you don't need it, because a current that high won't pass. I got this trim pot here of 10k. It's multi-turn to be able to regulate the voltage that people want here, here's a 22 micro capacitor for 50V very small, here it is the integrated circuit that will make the PWM adjustment, to switch this MOSFET is the traditional CI555, very common, remembering, here you can use this ferrite inductor, and you can use an iron powder inductor too, right? Below it is as you can see the trails. I didn't tinker with the trails because there is no need, it's a prototype right? So here, guys, this workaround is here because my soldering iron is very strong so when I go to tin here it already unglues the copper from the board, so for those who don't know how to make a dimmer, there's a video on the channel guys, a dimmer to be able to control the temperature of my soldering iron, okay? For transformers the dimmer is not good because it modifies the wave, the transformer rumbles a lot but it also works. So for resistive loads, like a soldering iron it will work very well for us. So let's see it working in practice so the video doesn't get too long and so our module is here, here's the input and here's the output, right? So I'll show you how it works in practice. So here guys is this charger, I'll show the voltage that comes out there, on the multimeter it comes out 6 volts, to be honest, I think that this charger Zener diode it must be leaking, it's at 6V it was for this minus, it was for this 5, but it's giving 6 volts, I'll put it here now in the converter and I'll see how much this voltage will rise, so the goal is this, it takes a low voltage and it raises the voltage according to the switching speed that the MOSFET is switched or transistor there, I'm just going to give a few touches guys because I don't know the voltage that is, my capacitor here is 50 volts, I did a test before and it didn't burst but it's there on the DC scale, I'll put it here look, I gave it a touch just and it went to 30 volts, you see, I gave another touch and it went to 44, so it's raising that voltage well, if I keep it held here, so I calculated this inductor by guessing, because there is no way for us to know for sure, to get more or less from 12 to 24 volts, with the intention of making this boost converter, so probably to decrease this voltage I can decrease the trim pot or decrease the turns, but it is not good to leave this inductance too low because if not, the MOSFET can be switching its own short then it will heat up a lot. So around 50 microhenry and upwards is recommended, right? So I touch here and there on the multimeter, it goes up right away, it goes up there to 50 volts, okay? So I'm here with this power supply turned on, it's a router power supply, this is its voltage there, 12.8 volts, and I'm going to put it here at the boost converter input and let's see what happens there, the multimeter test leads again in the correct place, so it's there, it was already there for 60 hertz, capacitor didn't burst, but you can see that it got hot, I'll see if it will burst at 60 volts. I'm going to put cooler now at the output, so we can see how many voltages will drop here. It dropped to 17 and the cooler is running fast, check this out. I thought it didn't have a lot of current, but it does have a decent current.
I have this lamp here, it is 220V, 70 watts, so I'm going to be working it at 70 volts direct current, so here it is, this is her cable, this is my lighting, but I use this LED lamp, I will test with this LED MUD too, I'll put it here at the input of the converter, remembering that this router source is 12 volts, so I'm going to touch the lamp there. So when I pull over, look, the lamp wants to light up. Very weak because it is obvious, we are entering with 12 volts, 500 milliamps and the lamp is 220 V, 30 watts, I will put the LED lamp here, for us to finish this video of the boost converter there, this is the LED lamp, bivolt it has 6 W, so I'll connect here. Oh it works, what the hell man. So with this converter you can put it in a car battery and use a perfect LED mud, you don't even need an inverter. And it's there guys, working, beauty. I ask you, subscribe to the channel, leave your like, share with your friends, the layout of this project plus the outline will be in the description of the video, big hug stay with God and until the next video.